means we have to enter this video. Okay. Yes, so we can see what's happening. Okay, okay, okay. So we can see what's happening. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So we can see what's happening. It's lagging, it's not. It has to lag. As far as it's small. There will always be lag. So, so you hope so I think I will now see chats here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so see chats here. Yeah. And when teaching time comes, I divide the team for the exam. So I can know when I want to demonstrate the company. This is where the chat is showing. Yeah. Let's see how many people are alive. No. Nobody's watching. That's one thumbs up. No. Okay. I think we will play this. Okay, hello. Happy to know that you are there as uh, I promised you that today I will take a look at the NECO practical or just a guide to practical biology. It may not only be for NECO, but it will help you so much. First, you should know that uh, most of the specimen providers, it's not a must that they should ask questions in each of them. Some may be just to confuse you, just to be there. But uh, the first one you have to know is that we have to be as brief as we can in this uh, guide is a guide and remember to read questions well in the examination before providing answers some majesty easy world science channel remains the best i am here for you so to go straight to the point remember you need your magnification while drawing this thing gives you mark your drawing need to have a caption so this caption is also needed in every biological drawing among the specimen provided there are many things they may ask us to draw and uh, in this video, I won't teach you how to draw. Maybe in another video, if you request, I'll teach you how to draw all the specimens. But here, we will take a look at the possible questions and guides to uh, uh, handle those questions in the examination hall. Remember, my practice is not the best. Here, I am giving you a guide to do the best by yourself. It's, instead of giving you fish, I will teach you how to fish. That is how to make you rich. So uh, when we come to this, we have a, a such specimen like yam tuba, cassava tuba. We take these two alongside. One good thing about these two, yam tuba and cassava tuba, is that both are actually storage organs. Both are what? Actually storage eh, organs. They are considering yam tuba and uh, cassava tuba. Biology practical guy. So, both are, both are storage uh, organs. So, the main work is that they store food. And uh, both also provide anchorage a bit for the plant. Both provide uh, anchorage to the plants. Then, the difference between the two. The differences between the two is that yam tuba is a stem tuba. Yam tuba is actually a stem tuba. The cassava tuba is a, a root tuba or tuberous uh, root. So in the other way around, yam tuba is not only a storage organ but a perennating organ, which means the, the plant can use it to, to survive seasons. Am I communicating? So plants can use it to survive from one season to another planting season. But cassava tuba is not a perennating organ. That is a clear difference between them. But similarity is that both are storage organs, both provide a anchorage. Is that clear? So in the other way around, this one is side, somehow forming beside, like you can see in the cassava. But this one can be the main major thing, so that the upper part can be planted to give rise to a new plant. But you can't plant cassava. Then, without wasting time, 
Uh, next one is that, but you should know that the food stored in the two are the same thing. They are, they are half carbohydrates, mainly starch. It is starch that is present in the two. Then the, we may have a specimen like quadrats and the insect nets. The quadrats and the insect nets. So these two are actually for population study, quadrats and insect nets. So this quadrat is a frame. Quadrat is any frame of known dimension made of wood or iron. Common one we usually use is one meter square quadrat. So it is actually used to determine the population size, the population that a cedar species or cedar acuta. Cedar species, is there any question? None yet. Okay. So we have the cedar acuta and the cedar species, that's grass species, even a, 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 a lephus maximus, all these uh, even spear grass, you use these quadrats to study their population. So the main use of the quadrat is for population study, specifically to study the population of grass uh, species. You don't use it to study the population of uh, giant trees or flies. So it requires several tosses, whereby in that recording, you need to have number of uh, number of tosses, then we have a uh, frequency but you will not be required to know that they, they won't ask you to do that because they are not taking you out of the field if they do first thought maybe if you get five you record it let's take a look at maybe we are studying cedar species then the third thoughts maybe we get three the fourth thoughts maybe we uh, uh, we got something like uh, two fifth thoughts we still get something maybe like zero Therefore, after these several tosses, you, you can now assess some information from this by summing up the number of plants. What I mean is, if you throw for the first time, you count the number of cedar species inside that quadrat. The first one, we got five. Second one, zero. The third one, we got three. Fourth one, assume you got two. Then the fifth one, you didn't get anything that's zero you see it's five but the number of plants that are called is ten then what should be your population density in this case your population density is equal to total number of toss total tosses all over sigma fx you know what i mean if here is our fx which is frequency so the summation of the frequency will give us 10, and the total number of thoughts is actually... Uh, okay, please, I'm uh, twisting it. It should be the summation of the... That's the total, all over number of thoughts, please. That's sigma fx, all over number of f tosses. So what do we have? 10 over 5. We are not asked from this. We threw this thing five times. So what we have here, we have two per, two per meter square, two per meter square, exactly two per meter square in the sense that the area of the quadrat is one times one. If the area is two times three, it becomes two per four meter square. So here represents our population density case. Then insect net is actually, it depends on the one they want, I wouldn't know if we are talking about the one we use to protect the plant from uh, uh, other insects. But are they talking about the one we use to collect insects during study? But I think they mean the one for collection of insect sample during population study. It is just for collection. This insect net is for collection. If there should be any other use, it's actually, it's actually used to protect plants from attack from insects and also birds. Then we have such a one like uh, the rain gauge. Rain gauge is one of the, the uh, is one of the instruments used to measure some ecological factor. Some of the ecological factors. Uh, you know, then a rain, after each rain, you can rain per week, per month, per year. That's annual, depending on. Then we have rice grain here. Rice grain is very much important. 
rice grain is very much important in the sense that you need to know that rice grain is not a seed, rather it is a fruit. That little rice grain you are having is actually a caryopsis. So question that may come there, you may identify the class uh, or the level of organization of rice grain. Rice grain is not actually a seed, but what? A fruit. So you may be required to differentiate between rice grain and dry granite seeds. So in that case, you just tell them that rice grain is a fruit or a grain, then that granite is a seed. So there is difference between seeds and fruits. In the sense that when you come to fruits, fruits have two scales. The two scales there, we have the remnant of style, and then we have also the, the, the fruit stock. But seeds have nothing but uh, one scale. So the granite has only but one scale. So granite is a seed. Uh, it may be any specimen, I wouldn't call them. Uh, I'm just giving you a guide. But rice is a fruit. That's the clear thing you're supposed to know here. Understood? Then, that of a uh, dry granite seed is also a legume in terms of fruit classification, but rice grain is a caryopsis. Caryopsis. In case, caryopsis. Then, that of a uh, granite is a legume. That's granite is a legume, whereas rice is caryopsis. You cannot separate the seed clearly from the fruits. Then uh, we have something like the contour feather, usually used to maintain the shape, to maintain the shape of the body. And that is where we have the next one, quill feather. Quill feather is otherwise known as are found mainly at the wings and uh, actually at tails. The main function of quill feather is for flight. The main function of the quill feather is actually for flight. Is there any question there? Okay. Do we have any viewer? One. Okay. Now, uh, we will still continue with that. So, the actual function of the counter feather is to maintain the shape of the bed. Gives the shape and also helps in beautification. Then, quill feather is for flight. So, if, you, if they ask you to draw that, maybe in another streaming, you see how to draw these uh, feathers provided. Then the uh, philoplume feather is a hair-like uh, something. The philoplume feather is hair-like in shape. Uh, it's a hair-like something. It is usually scarce in the bed. And uh, it may help to hold down feather and contour feather intact during preening. Uh, so beds preening time to time. So trying to clean their body. So the a uh, philoplume, or uh, yeah, philoplume may serve to hold them. It is more like a hair. It's a feather that looks like hair. Don't confuse this with those ones at the mouth or those at the beak. Then we have millipede and centipede. Remember, your comments are necessary here. Anytime you are watching this, I'll be there to answer you in any case you are confused. Anytime you watch this, so you downloading may not help because from download, you will not ask these questions. So you rather use the comments box so that I will clear you well. So we have some specimens like a millipede and also centipede. The millipede and centipede, one common thing there is that they are, they are all animal, of course. Their kingdom is animalia. And then their phylum is uh, actually arthropoda. They are the arthropods, meaning they have jointed uh, appendages. They have jointed appendages, exactly. And the word arthropod means jointed appendage. So when you say atro is joint actually, then pod means leg or appendage. So arthropod. When we take a look at centipede and millipede, they are all arthropods. That's their phylum. Then they, this may form a very good ground for differentiation. Millipede, centipede. They are, then their uh, superclass or their subphylum, maybe, uh, not maybe, it's myrapod or myrapod. Poda, my rapoda, meaning many legs. They have many legs. Apart from being having jointed appendages or jointed legs, their legs are many in each body segment. Then coming to my rapods, the my rapods, that's the my rapoda, are divided into two groups, and the each group have a representative in the specimen. We have the chilopoda and the diplopoda, the diplopoda and the chilo, 
decoder. So these are the two groups of my effort. If don't even get confused. And in our specimen, we have millipede and then centipede. It's very simple. C to C. As you can see, this is centipede and it goes to chilopod. So a good example of chilopoda is centipede, while millipede is a diplopod. A diplopoda. If you are asked to differentiate between the two, what will you say? First, millipede has Millipede have actually two pairs of walking legs in one. See the illustration. Let's assume that this is a millipede. And these are segments. If you come to segments, and hence their name, diplopoda. That die here, diplopoda means two. Just two legs in one body segment. Remember, this is the segment. If you come here, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But if you come to the, the centipede, otherwise known as the chilopod, in each body segment, in each body segment, there is a pair of walking leg, just one pair in each body segment. So this one clearly differentiates it. We tell the examiner that millipede has two pairs of walking leg in one body segment, while centipede have what? One pair of walking leg in, in each body have two pairs. If you are confused, C to C, centipede, chilopoda. That's it. And remember, now, they may ask us to uh, relate between them. What are the similarities between millipede and uh, centipede? From my, class, uh, from my class so far, the is atropods. Then they are all my reports. You can say presence of what? Jointed appendages in both. Presence of jointed what? appendages in each case then presence of exoskeleton then presence of uh, pairs of walking legs or you say presence of many walking legs and that's why they are called my reports then i think they also have a pair of antenna or either two pairs of one both are arthropods or you say both possesses exoskeleton then you also say both have numerous uh, legs so these are their features that makes them atropod. You can say presence of segmented eh, body. They are actually segmented, or rather, they have jointed what appendages. So eh, I will now look onto your questions to know where I will throw more light as far as this specimen is concerned. You wouldn't be wasting much time here because this uh, specimen, there are many, of course, but they are straightforward. There wouldn't be too much questions. Now we have uh, the next one, the grasshopper is there and the spider, grasshopper, spider. So the grasshopper and spider, they are all arthropods. They all have jointed uh, appendages. These specimen are all arthropods, but grasshopper scientifically called, uh, it depends on the species, Zonocerus species, uh, Zonocerus variegatus, depends on the, the species you are provided with. But you are not asked to provide any species, you just say grasshopper. So first, since you see that there are many things relating uh, the so-called millipede, centipede, grasshopper, spider, you note it. I say that they are all what? Atropoda. So which means they may ask you to list the specimen, I mean to list the phylum of specimen where millipede, centipede, grasshopper, and spider belongs. The answer is Atropoda. Give reason for your answer. They all have jointed appendages. Or you say, that they all have exoskeleton because it's common among the, those uh, specimens provided. Then, once you consider grasshopper and spider, grasshopper is an insect. And you can collect that grasshopper using that insect net. You can prevent the movement. So maybe they can relate insect net to grasshopper, I wouldn't know. But just know that grasshopper is an insect. The class is insecta. But spider actually is an arachnida. Spider is not an insect, take note. And differences may um, emanate from these two specimens. So the possible differences is that 
Uh, they, are, they, are, they are quite obvious. I've told you they are classes. They define their classes. Spider is an, uh, is a, is an arachnida, while, whereas that of a, a grasshopper is an insector. So if you know the differences between insect and uh, arachnids, you have gotten the answer. But let me help you. In a tabular form, differences between grasshopper and uh, spider, if you are there. So we have number one. Grasshopper being an insect has three body divisions. The, these three body divisions are actually the head, the thorax, and abdomen. That is for the grasshopper. Then spider has only two body divisions, cephalothorax and abdomen. Cephalothorax and the abdomen. So the differences between grasshopper and uh, spider, one, these ones have three, uh, this grasshopper have three body divisions, namely the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So these are the three body divisions. But spider has only two body divisions, which are has only two body divisions. Check if you can copy the link. Yeah. And post it somewhere submit. If there is there any option to copy link. That will be after the guys. It's not here. Okay. Now we have two body divisions. And these two body divisions are only the head and the cephalothorax. Cephalothorax. So cephalothorax is actually the, the, the abdomen and the... Uh, okay, sorry, there is nothing like head. Sorry, sorry. We have the cephalothorax and abdomen abdomen yeah. antenna is totally what absent so the arachnids are groups of arthropods that lie entirely then another difference is that the grasshopper have three pairs of walking legs three pairs of walking legs present then four pairs of uh, walking legs so these are the differences then there may be other ones that will uh, uh, that will make differences between but these are the ones that are obvious actually based on what you are observing the grasshopper is actually, oh, you wouldn't say greenish because it's not every grasshopper that is greenish, but probably the majority of them are actually greenish. So grasshopper may be greenish. Other thing is that if they ask you to relate grasshopper and millipede, it's obvious. Millipede is a myrapoda, whereas grasshopper is an insector. Grasshopper has three pairs of walking legs. Whereas the millipede and the centipede has numerous walking legs. There are numerous walking legs in them. So just go back, watch this video again. You can now relate between any of these arthropods eh, provided. Then spider, what are the economic importance? Even grasshopper, they may go to economic importance of any of the specimen provided. Most of them are poisonous. They are actually venomous you should avoid centipede so then that's of a millipede you can say one of uh, the economic patterns again is that they have to erase the soil uh, of course the the feeding pattern is that they feed on dead tree tools that is dead tree tools they are dead rivers dead rivers they feed on dead decaying uh, leaves and other organic uh, matter so by so doing they are also enriching the soil because when they feed on all these things they add manure to the soil so economic importance of grasshopper is that uh, it's a good specimen for learning. And uh, you remember during your uh, primary school days, in those uh, early school days, you can play with uh, your grasshopper in the fields. Am I communicating? 
Is there any question there? Mm -mm. Okay. If there is any, let me know. So it can be a good specimen, a playing specimen for little kids for beautification. Then the grasshopper, I think, can lay a very poisonous uh, egg that may be harmful. I don't know. But just know that it is a good specimen for sporting activities by kids and also is a good specimen for learning. And it is also a pest, though. Uh, the cata the the, uh, the lava stage is a very deadly to plants, but the adult ones they hop from one glass of, I mean a, a, a pest to crop, so they destroy or damage uh, uh, vegetations which are useful to man. Then any, any economic importance of spider, they spoil our home with their web. A spider web is not good, it keeps the house unclean, and you know it's a trap. They use this web to hold the egg and the young uh, ones. So, please, the, what they use to produce this web is what we call spinnerets. So, the spinnerets help the spider in the production of this web. So, through their web, they, they, they damage our building and they keep it unfit and unclean. And it might also interest you that some spider are also venomous. Uh, we have highly venomous spider, but I don't think it is found here in Africa. But some other side of the world, we have highly venomous spider that you may not even last a day if it affects you. So these are one of the economic uh, importance. I know, all I know is that I don't think there is any nation that eats spider. Then we have lava of a house fly. A lava of house fly is actually called maggots. When we take a look at lava of, of house fly and lava of mosquito, we should consider what we call metamorphosis because they have brought a stage of development here and this stage is called uh, actually uh, lava you know what lava is uh, we have two types of metamorphosis complete metamorphosis and uh, incomplete metamorphosis and these two that is undergoing complete metamorphosis because in incomplete metamorphosis there is nothing like lava. So the lava stage of housefly is called maggot. So the other specimen for housefly that represents the lava, we just call it maggot. Then the lava stage of mosquito is what we call regla. Regla. Regla is actually the lava stage of mosquito. Then that of a uh, housefly is maggot. So if you take a look at them, you may be asked to differentiate between the two. So when you go so you see, you look at them, use your discretion during the examination uh, because this is a guide actually. I wouldn't tell you everything, but I'll give you the basic guide. I'm quite sure that when you listen to this live stream very well, you watch it and ask your questions, interact anytime you get this, uh, you score not less than 80%. I'm quite sure in this exam or any exam that you are faced with any of these uh, specimens. So the regular actually is for mosquito, the maggot is for house. Uh, but both represent lava stage. Now, the regular actually, uh, it spoils our water because that's where they are commonly found. Regular, it has a very big head. And that's why you are asked, uh, we have a hand lens. We are asked to provide a hand lens for you. With the aid of the hand lens, you can view the regular. It is a bit tiny. If you are living in a rural area where you are not uh, fortunate enough to drink uh, clean water, uh, rain water usually contain this uh, regular uh, because a mosquito lay their eggs within and they hatch inside the water we drink. So when they hatch, they just like their name, they wriggle, wriggle. You see them inside water you are drinking. In the, in the rural area, they, they tap it off and continue their drinking. So I'm indirectly telling you now they are eat for drinking and regulars live in water. The maggots not necessarily live in water. We can commonly find this uh, in uh, physics. That is when you go to toilets, you can see this maggot moving here and there. So that shows that of a house uh, fly. And again, the, the maggots don't have something like gills, but regular have gills. If you look at it well, they breathe with a gill, and there is no clear distinct head in maggots. But regular have distinct head, and regular is usually blackish or brownish in color, Whereas maggot is usually whitish a bit. So, and this is soft body a bit, but this is a bit harder. 
So that's it for that statement. Next one is uh, we have uh, the flame of the forest and the actually hibiscus flower. Uh, this one is uh, about uh, flower. We're almost getting through. What is just left here is to now go through it again. Please, these two flowers are actually entomophilous flower or entomophily. That's they are insect pollinated flower. The flame of the forest. And then we have a hibiscus flower. Hibiscus. Hibiscus flower. So the two are actually insect pollinated flowers. These two are called insect pollinated flowers. Insect pollinated flowers. And the, the scientific study of insects is actually called entomology. Then, these flowers love insects and love or affinity for something you attract it with feel. So when you combine the word entomology and philos, it becomes entomophilus flower or entomophily. So these two flowers are entomophilus flower, entomophilus eh, flower, meaning entomophilus, meaning insect pollinated flowers. So what are the features? Um, the, when I say the features of entomophilus flower, I'm giving you the similarities between the flame of the forest and also hibiscus flower. One, uh, one, one of the features of entomophilus flower is that they are conspicuous conspicuous meaning they are obvious they are visible they can be found they are not hidden they are not tiny unlike the anemophilous flower like you can see in the maize uh, uh, male inflorescence of a maize plant and some other amaratus flower which are actually tiny this is the opposite of uh, entomophilus they are visible they are pronounced then next one is that they have brightly colored petals these two specimens have brightly colored what petals Brightly colored petals for attraction of what? Insects. So when you are asked to relate between the two specimens, you say presence of brightly colored eh, petals for the two. Then you can also say that both are actually insect pollinated. Then presence of a eh, stigma style, they all have it. Then differences is where the mark may come from. They, are ha they have a lot of differences. When you come to hibiscus flower, Hibiscus flower has have more than one stigma. Hibiscus flower have more than one stigma. So structurally, if you come to hibiscus flower, the common ones really have five stigmas. Then having one common tube, corolla tube going down to form an ovary. But when you come to the flame of the forest, it's usually, not usually, it has but one stigma and one style, which goes down to form a carpel or what we call a chamber. So from this flower anatomy, you can differentiate between the two. This thing shows that when you come inside this ovary, there are many chambers. Each stigma has a chamber. So in hibiscus flower, there are five chambers in the ovary, which means that hibiscus flower have what we call syncapos ovary. Syncapos what? Ovary. The type of ovary is syncapos and is revealed by the fact that there are one, two, three, four, five. When we have more than one stigma fused together, know you also that the ovary will also have chambers. Each chamber is for one stigma. Whereas this one have one stigma, which shows that this flower is monocarpus. So hibiscus flower is syncarpus. That's hibiscus flower have syncarpus ovary, whereas flame of the forest have a monocarpus ovary. Reasons, one stigma, which is equivalent to one chamber. Then here you have more than one stigma, which is equivalent to that chambers. One, two, three and the five uh, chambers, of course. So these things are what we need to know. Then secondly, the difference is again is that the, that of 
uh, let me try remembering where there are extra woes present in hibiscus flower. There, there are there are extra woes such as epicalyx. So when you are asked to differentiate under here, you say epicalyx present. Epicalyx is present, but in flame of the forest, epicalyx is absent. Epicalyx is absent. An epicalyx is what should be on top of calyx. You know, calyx means calyx means collection of sepals. Calyx means collection of sepals. Then what is on top of the calyx is what we call epicalyx. So if you are drawing hibiscus flower, there is something like this. On a rough sketch, Then we have the hair-like structures this way. Then we have the receptacle. Then on from here, you can now continue. We have your the center going this way. So this one is a good representation. Remember, this is a rough sketch, please. Five. That's the five, if I'm correct, shows pentamorous. You say pentamorous. That's having the pentamorous means that the, the so called. Uh, so I'm giving you a sketch of a hibiscus flower. Then when you go up, it is exactly this I have over here. Now, this one is what we call the calyx. That's collection of sepals. These are the sepals. Then this one on top of it is what we call epicalyx. It's only for the hibiscus flower where you can find this type. It is absent in the so-called flame of the forest. Understood? Then here serves as our petal. No, petals are collect uh, collectively called uh, coro corolla. Corolla. So petals are collectively called corolla, while sepals are collectively called calyx. So from this structure, if you know this one should now be stigma, then we can also normally we have to represent the anther filaments. Exactly. So we have the anthers and the anther. This one now is the anther. Here is the anther filament. I suppose not to draw this because I said I will be drawing specimen in this uh, live stream, but maybe you are lucky. Then this one is the stigma. So here is the style and the stigma to fuse together. Then coming here is actually, you can see also the receptacle. So now another difference. Let me just carry you up to speed if you are confused. I said one of the differences between Hibiscus flower and the flame of the forest is that hibiscus is syncarpus, why forest or the monocarpus uh, ovary. Second one is that epicalyx is present in uh, epicalyx is present in hibiscus flower, but absent in flame of the forest. Then third difference is that the sepals of the flame of the forest is brightly colored like petals. I repeat. The sepals of the flame of the forest is brightly colored like their petals, which means you can say, this thing that I said now means that flame of the forest is petaloid, is what? Petaloid, meaning petaloid refers to sepals. Petaloid refers to sepals that look like petals, that look like eh? petals, that is sepals that are brightly colored like petals. It is in the nature of sepals to be green, while petals can take any other color. Petals are colorful. It can be red, yellow, orange, 
but sepals are supposed to be green. So flamboyant flower, the sepals are brightly colored. And in that case, we say that flamboyant flower is petaloid, but hibiscus flower is not petaloid. This sepal is green, pure green. Understood? So that, that's it. And uh, clearly, the so-called uh, the so-called flame of the forest is clearly and is obviously pentamorous flower. Pentamorous, meaning, meaning that it has sepals in five, petals also in five. So which means it has what we call, uh, in terms of uh, symmetry, uh, the flower have what we call radial symmetry because it is uneven. Okay, then uh, with this, I think we have tried for this uh, live stream. I will take over this uh, specimen again. We have yam tuba, I told you. Yam tuba and cassava tuba are all storage uh, organs and they also provide anchorage. But the difference is that yam tuba is a perennating organ. Apart from being a storage organ, you can reproduce a new yam using the tuba. Then the cassava is just a storage organ, but not a perennating organ. It cannot use, you cannot uh, actually produce new cassava by using the tuba. That's what I mean. So another name for uh, the, the cassava tuba is a, a tuberous uh, root, otherwise known as root tuba, while yam tuba is a stem tuba. Then quadrat, I told you, is a frame made up of uh, either uh, iron or wood of accurately known dimension. So it is nice you are there, and I told you how we can use the quadrat. Then we have rain gauge for measuring the amount of rainfall per month, per year, per annum. Then we have rice and granite. I told you that rice is a caryopsis, is a dry fruit. Granite is also a dry fruit. Rice grain is a fruit, not a seed. Then rice grain and dry granite fruit are all dry in that sense. That's rice grain is a dry fruit, but granite there provided is a seed. And I told you rice have two scales. Rice grain have two scales, whereas that of uh, granite seed have only one scale. Then contour feather maintains the shape and also beautification of the bed, found almost in the, the body of uh, the birds, and is part of the bird's plumage. It's actually used for beautification. Then we have the contour feather, uh, the sorry, the quill feather. The quill feather is for flight. It is found in the wings and in the tail of the bird, and is the biggest feather. is well pronounced. They have the calam, the uh, calamus, of course, and they have the different parts, uh, the babus and the barbs, the rashes. When I will teach you the drawing, if I have time to live stream again, uh, you will see that. Then we have the philoplume feather, a hair-like feather, and it can help to bring cushioning effect on the other feathers during preening by birds. Then we have a millipede, a centipede, I told you they are my rapports, whereas millipede is, is a diplopoda because it has two pairs of walking legs in each segment, whereas a, a centipede is a chilopod, chilopoda, because it has one pair of walking legs in each body set segment. Then remember the millipede, I think the last pair should be an exception, I, I mean the centipede, the last pair, the rare pair, the one behind may not have the one pair. Then grasshopper is an insect. Uh, it, it also, I told you the no importance, it causes damage to crops, it's a, it's a pest to crops, it damages vegetation, and it can be a, a source of sport for children in the field, and the type of adaptation usually is blended because we usually have green grass, in the, I mean, a green grasshopper in a green grass, so it is what we call camouflage, blending, hiding cryptic coloration is not pronouncing. Then we have a spider. The spider is an arachnid, not insect. Then we have the lavas provided, the lava of mosquito, the lava of housefly, the flame of forest, and viscous flower. I think we have come to the end of this live streaming as far as uh, this practical biology is concerned. Please remember to ask your question using the comment box. Share this particular live stream to help someone pass. Sir Majesty's World Science Channel is good for you. We need you to expand this science community. And I want to let you know that science do not lie only for examination. Check other videos here in my channel, practical videos. I have many videos in science, especially in chemistry and biology. And I have serious plan in getting you involved in mathematics and also in physics. But two videos are better than one. I won't take it all. I've specialized actually in biology.
biology, chemistry, and medical related courses. So check out my videos. You can check the playlist. There are many things in the playlist. hacks and tricks where you get marveled about things happening in this channel start fire with water marriage proposal with chemistry getting a girl surprised in the laboratory of chemistry then we i can't remember that there are many of them even a white flame where you can inflate a balloon and they even manufacture artificial blood in the lab so you should check out those things under the playlist known as science trick and the hacks then diys that is doing yourself in industrial productions and many production of refined and refined chemicals in the laboratory like how to make your body pre and check out the debate for uh, NACO exam subscribers have testified and uh, I want members that will join in research because I've done I've gone so far that I won't go back I'm looking on to you please support and expand this particular channel, Sir Majesty Easy World Science Channel. Let your friends know about it in the university, in secondary school, even at home, because I have health tips also for your parents. So you check out my health tip videos where we discussed about blood grouping, how you can know your blood group, even the risk associated with abortion, the abortion drugs, countries that legalized it and countries that did not legalize abortion, and some of the complications that comes for those that are involved in illegal abortion.